wild times. Yes. Actually got music in studio today. People Big improvements. People don't need to know that that's all been dubbed. Nah, all right, we're back. Wild times uh, podcast. Oh, f- off, Kyle. I'm talking into the microphone. Shut Coming up. Coming right in with a hard. We F. don't need a number today, but He's we such do. A cunt. <laughs> He's Whoa! <terrible. laughs> wow. You can't drop a C bomb on. He's on gonna air. bleep it. Oh man, everyone's amped up. I'm gonna tell the listeners what just happened. Yeah. Okay. The speakers are still on. Tire. Yeah. Um, I asked Forrest uh, if he wanted to go to a Green Day concert. Yeah. With uh, Smashing Pumpkins and the band Rancid, and yep. he was like, "Who's Rancid?" And so we were just blasting the song Ruby Soho, and it just got everyone so far. Ruby, 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 Ruby Soho! <laughs> I, I don't mean, know the song. Are you, were you the singer of Rancid? Dude, it's pretty good, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Punk rock is so great from back in the day because it's literally <laughs> as if the three of us started a band in a garage literally. and yeah. just screamed into a microphone. Uh, whatever way. you were thinking that sort of rhymed. <laughs> and yeah. then oh, people yeah. would like literally like just be destroying themselves in a mosh pit. Dude, I was one of them. heads. Until Patrick put Rancid it on the speaker. I I swear I wasn't gonna have a. 10 you said you wanted beer. to take a couch nap. I was gonna take a couch <laughs> nap. Did. Yeah, I, yeah. You yeah. went from couch nap to let's get smashed. No, I, I, and that's the feeling that I have about going Dude, to this. Dude, we're going to this. Okay, yeah. so what I want to get because it's where the Chargers play, right? And yeah. so I have really good seats. I want to get my seats. What would you be willing to pay? What's your fl- max? It's Green Day, Rancid, and Smashing Pumpkins, Smash- and one <gasps> other band. Uh, I'd pay up to two hundred bucks. Okay, that's it. What are you nuts? I think it might. I think it's probably gonna be like five hundred for the real. No, 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 no lot, let me more, than that, more than that. In my expenses. section, in my <laughs> yes, it would be a business expense. In my section, all the food and booze is free. Oh well, you didn't mention that. Yeah. usually I allocate at least like a buck fifty to that. Okay, so you go so, three fifty. Yeah, three fifty four. Can I look? If you I guys feel like are it's both gonna going, be five hundred. If you guys are both go. going, I'm. Yeah. Hold on. Like, let, let me just explain something to you, two morons. So. <laughs> Uh, we were looking for Adele tickets for my mother-in-law and father-in-law in Vegas, right? This is and not how any good story has ever stop started. We so we were for looking Adele for the tickets. tickets, and uh, guess how much it was for, like, just to be in non-nosebleed seats? Now, let me ask you this. Vegas is crazy, though, and there's small venues. Can let me you ask answer you. the fucking question? No, I, 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 this is going to dictate Expand my answer. This story? Okay. Was this... When Adele was still obese? It's now. Or it was the, the other day. It was okay, because I'd pay more for new Adele. Okay. So I'm going to say 700 bucks. <laughs> no. You are insane. These seats are upwards of $7,000. For you, nosebleed the, seats? The well, seats Is that it you, in the sphere? No, no. I, I was saying, did I say nosebleed? I meant non-nosebleed seats. You definitely said nosebleed, right? He said non-nosebleed. But oh, 7,000. These are smaller <laughs> venues. Adele is, I have to think, much more popular than Green Day and Rancid. All right. But. Okay, so. I'll look. I'll look. Price picks. Oh, price picks more or less $400. More. For your seats. All right, let's go I more or less $600 be, then. I fear they're going to be like. A thousand, definitely. But we don't be. need to sit in those seats. Okay. We sh- we but if we can, the and they're around five hundred bucks, I'm in. I'll okay. go. Right. I'll go for the experience. And here's why: it's going to be a bunch of forty year olds with hip problems, like head banging yes. and screaming the chorus. My wife there. just went to Death Cab for Cutie, and no it's way. exactly that at Dude, the Hollywood Bowl. That's yeah, but that's pretty, that's also like very solid. chill music. Chill music and postal service. Yeah, it's chill music, but yeah, very chill. It's it's, it's an not. opposite thing, but it's going to be the same age group, is what I'm saying. Fair enough. Thank I think you. we should go. I'm, right. I'm super This down. is an animal podcast, isn't it? No, no, it's about punk rock music. Oh, you have a thylacine shirt. You do? Yeah, have, okay. I do. It's a little messy. I was just is there anything in the news popcorn. about the thylacine? No. Why would, no, you, why would you say found, that? Was there anything in the damn news? Forrest and BTG went to West Papua <laughs> and button, found Kyle? a thylacine. It's number two or three. <laughs> is there a thylacine? What's in the news? <laughs> Sir, news from the underground. It's in the news. Ooh, we got real music in studio. Um, all right, well, I don't have thylacine news, but I do have some pretty exciting news. You guys remember a couple right. years ago, I made a Shark Week show called Island of the Walking Sharks, went to Papua New Guinea. No, mm-hmm. I've never heard of it. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, Let's yeah. pretend you, you guys- You incurred $100,000 of excess baggage yes, fees. 90, yes, 90,000. <laughs> yeah. I'm, still, I'm still clawing my way Stop out of that hole. Off. I'm not joking, by the way. <laughs> it's the closest I've ever come to shutting the doors on my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> and going back to being a biologist, making 14 bucks an hour. <laughs> Jeez, um, man. Counting ants. But, but, um, yeah, in uh, the Brookfield Zoo, a Ooh. brand new baby epaulet shark was born. Mm. But here's the thing. First of all, Brookfield Zoo is in... Is it Chicago. 
in Chicago. Chicago land. In Illinois. My alma mater. Right. Here's the thing, though. This appellate shark was born through parthenogenesis. Don't know what the, the, I've heard of it, learned about it in Bio 101. Explain it. I don't know what the shark is or the term. Can you explain both, please? We've, we've talked about both of them. Well, well let's get into it. Uh, awesome. Parthenogenesis is when a female produces a clone of itself without, ah, yes. without male reproduction. So it's pretty cool. Um, this female shark produced a fertile egg through parthenogenesis, which is what happened. Some elasmobranchs, sharks, and ray species, some lizards, a group of different animals can do it. But basically, the cells split and duplicate and create a clone Very of the cool. mother. And so, yeah, this zoo just decided, or not didn't decide, but the zoo just had a female shark do that without ever having male contact. Is this very, very atypical of, of something that sharks do? Or is this, I mean, I don't understand. Sharks, lizards, a couple, basically, not certainly not everything. Remember, wasn't, didn't we talk about a crocodile doing it? Yeah. Two yeah, months yeah, ago? yeah. Yeah. So it happens when like undue and extreme lack of sexual pressure happens on a group of animals that are capable of this. Like, I wow. never happened to a human, right? It just wouldn't. No, like, but that's fascinating. That. But dude. basically, imagine you're a female shark that's been trapped your entire life with no sexual stimulation, and your DNA, your evolutionary biology takes over and goes, we need to make babies. You're the last one left. There's yeah. no more. There's no male coming around. Bro, so, it yeah. blows my mind. No, so do they, like, does she have to, like, kind of, like, get her fin down there and, like... Robert, dude, good lord, do what they a have clitorises? Um, clitor, well, these these are hard questions to field. Um, <laughs> dude, no, I, 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 as far as I'm aware, no in the comments, if Let you me know about shark no pleasure, involved. I mean, what, there's no pleasure in childbirth to begin with. Like, what True. a all right, it's like gotta, the worst you of all have some pleasure to be able to get there. So, for us, but not for the sharks. Let me ask you saying. this do they now when they do, is it or is it? When it's parthenogenesis, it's an exact clone of the mom, right? Correct. There's no very, they Correct. can't mix up it's the identical. DNA. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. It is. So um, you did say just now that I forgot what I was going to say. Go on, carry on. I literally fucking just had a blank. I had I'm going to start um, super gluing fishing weights to my t shirts because what? every time I sit here, the fucking, I dude, like, I don't want my midriff exposed. No, like I the, really, really see, don't. I, I find myself on this couch sitting with my arms crossed and I saw like some people commenting like his body language is tense. <laughs> yeah, it's like, no, it's the couch. <laughs> let me, let me, let, I let don't me know just, what else I'm to do with my us. arms on this couch. So the last couple podcasts we did, uh, they came from your garage and people really liked them. So that was exciting. And the, the comments have been just flowing on YouTube and there's been like, I would say 33 and 0.3% of the comments have been about Pat's nonstop moving leg. He does do that. Just a lot. nonstop. And then somebody said, you guys have cheap chairs, which Try I mentioned. sitting next to him on an airplane. I mean, you have, but it's like. Those chairs well, are, I'm always too those drunk chairs are for from restoration hardware. <laughs> Dude, um, not by the way, cheap. By the way, let me throw something in here because okay. Peter's asked me to do this for about a year, and this is the first time I've remembered. Cheers, mate. If you're listening to this, go over and watch it on YouTube and hit the. It's a bell. Bell. Hit the bell button. Hit the bell. Do you know about this? No, of course no, not. No, I, I didn't either. You press a bell, and then you get a notification that... Kyle, shut up. He's fucking laughing at me. Oh, this is so funny. I hate him so much. He, you, get, you press the bell, and then you get a notification that we've just uploaded a new podcast. Ah. That's, that's yeah. a good thing to do. The funny... Like, right? Did I get it right, Kyle? Thank on you. normal videos, people are like, smash that like button, hit the subscribe, push the bell, and hit all notifications. Force is like, there's a bell... Somewhere I, on I mean, the look, computer. I screen. watch a lot of YouTube. I go down YouTube wormholes every other night. I didn't know that that's what no, the bell was either. for. I've seen yeah. it. I was scared. I literally, of it. yeah, I had no idea. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah. So thank you, thank Epple you for saying. Sharks. I did the thing though. I appreciate yeah, you that. Did it. I love you. Thanks. Epilet shark. Smash that like button. <laughs> now that's the walking shark that you were looking for. Correct. It was, it was the epilet shark. Yeah. So it's like a three foot shark. Yeah, beautiful. Kyle, pull up a pic, would you? They're a little no, um, nocturnal Australian epilet shark. So there's there's a couple there's. Five species in total, I believe. Um, but this was the Australian one. So it's the only one that's really common in the pet trade is this Australian one. That's the right one. Did you find one? In yeah, the, in I found the... three. three. Three of the five species. Super hard to find? Not really. Really easy to find. Our mission wasn't just to find them. It was to see if we could actually film the Australian species walking out of water. And we, we got one. Oh, oh it's nice. That, it's that that one. The, yeah. the one that walks over the rocks. Yeah, Not, yeah. Now the I one that Rogan visual. was like freaking out about. Yeah, like, have yeah. you seen this shit? The shark's walking out of the water. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty freaking cool. Uh, and that was your clip? Yeah, my clip. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was That's stuck. very cool. So, so these, Beautiful animals. So these there's one species that walks? All of them. So epaulet is a group of sharks, or also known as walking sharks. And then oh. I think... 
You can look it up, Kyle. I think there's five species in total. And there's three in Papua New Guinea, one in Australia, and one in Indonesia, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Um, and so we we filmed uh, four actually the the one the Australian one, and then the three in Papua. And uh, then at the very end, we managed to capture the leopard epaulet. Which type in leopard epaulet shark to see how beautiful this animal is. But we managed to capture this guy walking out of the water, and it was the first time it's ever been filmed. So oh, it was wow. pretty pretty historical. Yeah. Is that one on social media anywhere? That the the shark walking is that on your IG? I don't know. Maybe uh, right. I, is it? I, I must have posted it around the show. Yeah, yeah if you can find it. Is it still it, true? I remember Romanoff telling me because I was asking him like, Mark what Romanoff? Is, yeah, uh, underwater videographer mm -hmm. extraordinaire mm -hmm. uh he was telling me because i was like what is your bucket list thing to film yeah like what's your holy grail and he said that this was a few years ago but the blue whales mating has never been filmed mm. oh i'm sure yeah i mean we've never seen great white sharks mating or giving birth we've never seen really? blue whales mating or giving birth like wow. a lot of these really big so it's one thing to be like oh this two foot shark nobody's ever filmed leaving the, the water tide it only occurs in a Hundred square miles in Papua New Guinea. Right. This is talking about blue whales and great whites, and there's a million other things like this too. We've never seen great white sharks mate. We, to this day, we don't know where they give birth. Dude, that's fascinating. Really? We don't know where where eels come from. Not joking. Like, look this up, Kyle. Throw this up like, on screen. Like, eels. you don't know how they, oh, they, they replicate. No, like eels. Your yeah, common yeah, yeah. American eel. Right. We don't know where they come from. <laughs> where where they breed, where they go, where they give birth. Nothing. That's well, there's crazy. that one kind of eel. That on, that swims to the Sargasso Sea, right, and yes. and breeds there. But then it disappears. But we don't know. That's the thing. It goes in. This is the one I'm talking about. It swims into the sea, and then a bunch of elvers, the babies come back. We don't know where they mate, when they reproduce, where their offspring gets dumped, how deep, how shallow. By the pelagic, way, benthic. We don't know. Anything good about it. on them because I, I don't trust humans with that knowledge. <laughs> I'll just say that we'll do something weird with it it's like the turtles dude we'll, we'll yeah. just you get, they have to like put up barriers from idiots going over there and like touching the this fucking turtles and this is true. you know it's like ridiculous yep this is all true did i tell you guys i had a pretty i don't think i did i, did I mention my blue whale thing this summer did no I, nah. uh -uh. no i don't think i did i was out uh chasing tuna this summer in august what, you mean trying to get laid or <laughs> that's funny um <laughs> yeah i was out chasing tuna this summer <laughs> And had a fucking bust of a day. Just like spent like 14 hours driving around looking for tuna boils and literally didn't see one. Tuna boils. That sounds gross. You're an idiot. I'm uh, sorry. I got vagina on the brain. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, after like six, seven hours of not seeing anything, we saw this blue whale in the distance. We're like, oh, sick. Let's go like see what that whale's about. And we motored over to it. Like you can't drive up on whales. Uh, one, because it just scares them off. But two, it's illegal. So we motored over to like, I don't know, 200 ish yards away and turn the engine off. And usually like blue whales are pretty reclusive. Like they're not very, they don't engage. Yeah. They really don't like you diving with them. Like they're not like humpbacks or grays or sperms that are just like swim right up to you. And this blue whale was completely different. I think I have a video. I can send it for Kyle to cut in. I definitely have a video, but um, yeah, this whale literally like we parked the boat here Whale was like cruising like this. We're like, Oh, it's going away from us, like swimming this way. And the boat was powered off. And then it turned and came right in and went under the boat and then turned around and came back under the boat like three more times. I jumped Sick. in, swam with it. It was amazing. Dude. It just was like looking up. It just wanted to see what the boat was all about, like looking at me. And then you're living yeah. a lot of people's dream. Not mine, but a lot of people's Definitely dream. Definitely not right yours. Is this Forrest <laughs> video or no? That. Yeah, yeah. This is my quality. Oh my God. That's this that's is a, what I filmed on my that's iPhone. That's amazing, <laughs> Forrest. Thanks. I got this all on thing. my iPhone. Forest Forest video is akin to the that very popular viral video that's out right now. All right, you guys, Patrick, you know this. Like, I have, yep. I'll find I animal this. shit. I'll pick it up, lick it, smell it, taste it, no problem. Human germs, disgusting. Yep. <laughs> I'm like Howard Hughes. Like, by the time I'm old, if I'm not covered in hand sanitizer at 24/7, yeah. I'm gonna freak out. Sure. So I got these Dewar pants, oh, antibacterial. Yeah. Oh wow! True story. I flew to flew to the uh, Paris in them. Wasn't freaked out by the airplane seats. They are also like an adventure pant. You can roll right out, feel good, going straight into a bar, going into a hike, anything. Nice. I love these. Pretty I'm sweet. also wearing my doers. These are the joggers. Like, wore them over here to do the podcast. Did you jog here? I'm a, I'm also gonna wear them to bed tonight. Yeah, it makes sense. You guys yeah. look great. I noticed something different about you. Didn't know it was the doers. Yeah. It's all in the pants. You know, doer is a great addition to your wardrobe. Straight up. But yeah, dude, they're crazy stretchy. Up to five times normal jeans. I wear these things to bed. Yeah. 
Look, if you're interested in uh, checking out some doers, go to uh, the flagship stores in LA and Denver or shop online at shopdoer.com slash wild. Right now, our listeners can get 15% off site-wide Ooh. when you use that special URL. <laughs> Shopdoer.com slash wild. Get your 15% off. Why That's not? pretty sweet. You're going to reach for them again and again. Bada boom. Well, it is Monday, which means Monday night football. football. Forrest, how you nice. doing? We're, we we love prize picks. We yeah. talk about prize picks. How is your prize picks doing? I've doubled my money. Have did, you really? Didn't start with a lot. So to <laughs> be clear, yeah, but <laughs> I have doubled my money. The guy who knows the least about NFL football. Correct. Doing very well. Most of my football knowledge comes from recent Taylor Swift news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> prize picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry. Prize picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks, submit yeah. my entry in less than 60 seconds. All right, tonight we got Broncos at Bills. I just have a feeling the Bills are going to kick the shit out of them. You think so? I'm going to be picking more than on a lot of Bills, on a lot of Bills stats. See, I base I base all my football knowledge on insulary things like the fact that I used to play the uh, Nintendo 64 game uh -huh. where the Denver Broncos were by far the best team. <laughs> okay. yeah. So I'm just going to go Broncos. Who was on there? Who was the quarterback on that? John Madden or something? No. Probably John Elway. 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 It was Elway. Elway. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So good. Good strategy. Yeah. Thanks. Evidently. Well, who would pick. win in a fight? A Bronco or a Bill? <clears throat> I don't even know what a Bill is. It a looks, Buffalo It's Bill? like a bison. Yeah. Yeah. But is that a Bill? I think it's a man named Bill who rides on a bison. Yeah. I'll take him. Who would okay. win? All right. Bill. Yeah, why not? All right. So I'm going to be picking more than on James Cook rushing Smart. yards. I'm going to be picking more than on Stefan Diggs receiving yards. I'm I'm going like Bills a For, lot. Force a lot isn't of, happy about it. Uh, my N64 days would say that the Broncos are definitely going to win. <laughs> with John Elway? Yeah, with Elway. So you want John Elway more than passing yards? Well, if he were. <laughs> no, around, I thought yeah. he was going to fall I don't for think it. it's going to be available. <laughs> <laughs> Go to prizepicks.com slash wild and use the code wild for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, if you go to prizepicks.com slash wild and use the code wild, you will get a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy at prize picks. Where a, uh, what was it? A gray whale or a humpback jumps into the air and a what is it? A surfer? Or a kite? What's oh, that hits guy the hydrofoiler. Just yeah. hydrofoiler. The, the, we talked about it on the bonus pod. The fifty-five-year-old hydrofoiler. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. just this video. That's, everybody that's has been sending video, it to me. Way. I know. Okay. I know. I'm, not, I'm not a moron. That's a Mark Romanoff video. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but if you haven't seen this video, Kyle, can can you pull this one up for a quick? Just it, we talked about it in the bonus, but I want to talk about it now because I've gotten a thousand messages and nobody messages me, but I've gotten DMs about this thing, and it's really pretty much like one of the best animal videos i've seen all year i like that so what's going on here this guy is what's this sport called oh my god every time it gets how me. do you not know what a sport is called what, is he's, it windsurfing he's hydrofoiling with a kite okay so he's hydrofoiling with a kite that's a sport i guess and what is that <laughs> a, a gray whale or a humpback Oh, I don't know. I mean, you don't exactly get a it. Oh, it looks just, like a humpback. I think it's a humpback. Yeah. Jumps out of the water and and this guy just smashes in. It's just to the, the timing is so crazy. And the video angle that he's got on a GoPro or something here. If, if he no, he's got one of those 360 cams for sure. Like one of those oh, pole, the poles? 360 cams. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that would be so scary. Yes. Oh my the, the idea of this giant like wall of animal coming down and pushing you under would be so terrifying. You have no idea what it is. Maybe it's a great white. I don't <laughs> know. You have no time to react. I mean, it's pretty, you know, that's a whale, yeah. but you don't expect to run face first into it at pretty 15, wild. 20 miles Come to an YouTube hour. and check that video out if you are only listening, because it is bananas. It's pretty crazy. I, I love, I love the, just the, the randomness of that, of just you, yes. your body and a whale's on the surface of the water at the exact same time. It's, it's like one of those things where you're like, all right, and you like chuck something like, like you throw a key in it, it hits the keyhole and lands in it. And you're like. Yeah, that'll never happen. Or again. that was oh, like a yeah. one in a billion. Nobody saw it. Yeah. Oh, dude, the greatest, the greatest, my equivalent of kite surfing into a whale. Yes. <laughs> so I lived in a house when I was like in my early twenties in L.A. And one of my roommates, terrified, mortified of spiders. Okay. He would have night terrors about spiders, um, like legit night terrors where he was like dreaming that there was a spider around him oh, and then wow. he like wouldn't go back to sleep for like six hours. Oh, wow. Big but time. Not miserable arachnophobia, right? 
So I'm in my room and I'm like watching TV and I just see something moving and there's like a pretty good sized spider on the wall. Nice. Okay. And it's like 3.30 in the morning. And so I literally just... You being the awful human you yeah. are. No, like, no, no, no. Go. Literally I causing just, him lifelong trauma. Well, and I, was, it was, I needed to get sleep, but I'm like watching TV <laughs> and insomnia and it's a mess. And I see this spider. And so I just grab a sock. I'm just like, get, I, this is going out of my room. Yep. So I just grab it like gently in a sock so as not to kill it. Just like grab it in Good a sock. I just open my door. I'm just going to chuck it out, right? Yep. And so I literally just open my door, throw it. And I throw it towards the little stairwell. Uh huh. <laughs> He's carrying a girl. Oh no! She's not passed out. Like they're being romantic. Yeah, yeah. Some girl he met at the bar. He's carrying her up the stairs, and I just throw the sock, and it just hits him in the mouth. No way! <laughs> oh, he dropped man. the girl down the stairs. Or what? <laughs> he's just, all he sees is his roommate he just just open a, a door and chuck yeah. a sock in his face. <laughs> he thought it was a cum rag. Yeah. yeah. Oh god! <laughs> and he just goes, "What the fuck?" And I just started like crying, laughing. I was like, "There was a spider in that sock," and he's just like, and like started like dancing. Around not getting <laughs> laid that night, dude. By the way, Forrest just had his uh gray whale hitting you on a kite surfing or whatever it's called, foil tinning. Uh, when you almost got struck by lightning, dude. Yeah, in a We've swamp. Covered this. I, I know we covered it, but yeah. it's like, dude, these are once in a lifetime things. But Pat, has there been any other once in a lifetime things that have happened no, to you? Spider in the mouth, it's never getting spider in the mouth's pretty sweet. I've had yeah. none. I'm I, I, like, maybe just my computer turned off and power went out one night, and I was like. <laughs> This You're is like, how lame my life this is. This will never happen again. Yeah. It happens yeah. like nine times a day at my house. What else um, we got? Any more yeah, news? Yeah, we got some more news. Um, Thailand announced a pretty cool discovery recently. I um, okay. saw this a couple weeks ago. Uh, a new species of alligator. No. Yep. <laughs> but it's not alive. 230,000 ah. years ago, uh, after dating the specimen, the Department of Natural Resources found an almost intact skeleton skeleton from the Pleistocene of an entirely new species of alligator, which is pretty cool because uh, what that shows is the alligator's habitat. So when we think of alligators, we think of Chinese alligator, American alligator, no other alligators. That's right. it, right? But this is showing that alligators, at least prehistoric alligators, used to range all over, including into this area in Thailand, which we didn't know about. And there's a rendering here of this short, crazy looking short, skull. Real short snout. Cool looking. That's a much scarier animal. I was going to say that's yeah. a that is the pit bull of alligators. It, it almost looks like a uh, yeah, like a like a snake or something much more scary, a Komodo dragon. Head. Yeah, now, yeah, here's, yeah. Here's the thing: when I first saw this picture, I looked at it and went, "Sure, okay, I get it. It's a crocodilian." Go back to that top photo there, Kyle. That is a dragon skull. That is. That's <laughs> like, a dragon skull. I've seen many a crocodile and alligator. This is a conspiracy cover-up because that is... Un <laughs> just zoom in on just that skull on the right there, Kyle. That is undeniably the skull of a dragon. Look at that. That is a dragon skull. Right? Look it at really the shape, is. the size, like everything. It's crazy. By the way, I know so much more about skulls because we keep playing, yeah, we keep the, playing the skull the game. The animal skull game on the bonus game. pods. It's the skull game is so hard. It's yeah. the hardest game we've ever played. No, it's yeah. not a game where anyone wins, to be quite honest. No. I th I yeah. think Even Kyle the audience loses. No, yeah, everyone. Yeah, if you're <laughs> I, watching, you're losing. I think Kyle has been putting them on the YouTube as just their own segment. Dude, I... I it's like we play a lot of games. Somehow I cannot get a single one right. So here's, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, here's what I imagine happens on the YouTube. And you know how much I engage and read the comments. Can you hit the bell? All Calm right, down. Sorry, go ahead. Here's what I imagine people watch the video. And then as soon as they see what the skull is, they go, oh, that's definitely a camel. And they type that. And it's like, told you. Ah, you know yeah. what I mean? So they watch it until the end and then pretend like they, they guessed it. Well, we, I tried on the last yeah, one. Is that happening, right. Kyle? I'm sure. On the last one we did, I tried to throw the animal skull into AI. Did not succeed. Although, no. it got pretty close. So, wait, you guys like the animal skull game? I like it. I don't want to play it. Uh, yeah. That wasn't where I was going. I love it. Uh, do you like <laughs> the animal sound game? Oh, it's, yeah. that's... I love this game. All right. Kyle's going to yes. DJ. Right. But I don't know the answer. So, Kyle, you're a DJ. Turn your mic on. And uh, he is going to... We're going to play the animals. We don't have a jingle for this yet. No. Should we no. do... Animal skull. Animal... Nope. Let's do it in sound. a rancid version. Sound. What? Sound. Animal sound. Yeah, the singer from Rancid was always doing this. Animal sounds. Fuck your mom. Animal sounds. Oh. oh. What's your version? As, as Rancid? No, yeah. No, just whatever you want. No, let Pat do it. They're gonna... 
We're gonna play a sound. It's an animal sound. Animal sounds. Whoa. Yeah. That, that was pretty good. Until yeah. you stepped on it, that was actually I really didn't sound it. Move back from the mic, so it won't. It won't, oh, okay. it won't All right, Kyle. Out. All right, are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All right, who, who makes our jingles? Okay. Shout out to MK, because now we need an animal sound jingle, thanks to Pat <laughs> singing. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yep. Number one. This sounds... Okay. Okay. Th- that sounds like when Forrest is trying to use a microphone. It goes... I heard it. Want to hear it again? I don't have a good... Do it again. Can Who's you do it a little first? louder? Yeah, let's do it one more time. All right. Crank it. All right, I have a guess. I got it. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's a big cat of some sort. I think that is a female cheetah. Okay. All right. Peter? I think that it is... Mitch, when you guys stay in a hotel room together, weird. Um, it's a good. It's, I agree with the big cat cry. Um, He's trying too hard. I'm going feral hog though, for real. Feral I'm gonna go hog. serval. Feral hog. It is a red fox. Ah, ah. we weren't even close. No. A, fo- a fox no. is a feline, though, right? All right, zero points awarded. Zero points awarded. A fox yeah. is a feline. It is not. It's a. It's a more it's a dog. Cannon. It's a more dog. Yeah, it's a okay. dog. Right. Cannon. Next right. number two. Something cute. Yeah, it's adorable. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a mole. Okay. Mouse lemur. Ooh, that's a good guess. Kangaroo rat. This is a whistling duck. Oh, come on, Edwin. Ducks no one quack. was getting that. <laughs> Don't make it so hard, play. bro. He definitely Googled weirdest animal sounds. Yeah, Edwin, start, start with to like, identify. dog goes woof, cow goes moo, would you? Yeah. Yeah, for real. Yeah, it's one come that on. I can get. Like even for me, like that. Is, is, nobody's getting that. <laughs> whistling What's duck. What's that? Oh, it's a whistling duck. <laughs> a duck goes quack, motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. if you're gonna yeah. do duck, go quack quack for us, Edwin. <laughs> quack, bastard. All right. <laughs> what do we got next? Let's see if we get quack. one. All right, number three. Here we go. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. So, so it's an animal that makes both of those very distinct Shrill sounds. sounds. Forrest, uh, you go first. I'm going to go flamingo. Ah. Yeah, I think it's a bird of some sort. Definitely a bird. Um, bird. Bird. I think it's... What's that real prehistoric looking bird? No, it's not that. Fuck. Um, osprey. It sounds so annoying that I'm going to go with a, uh, with a parrot. This is a bottlenose dolphin. Fuck off, Edwin. By the way. Just, just play any other dolphin sound quickly. Literally, go to YouTube and play bottlenose dolphin sound. I, I got to give Edwin a little credit, though, because he did put in the, I, the dolphin noises that are bullshit, after Bullshit, dude. That's like, the, that's like if you took like a three-minute long dolphin track and you're like, here's the weirdest part of the here's track. Here's the weirdest thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Edwin, give yeah. us a chance yeah, here. I've, I, do you know how many times I've watched, uh, what's the dolphin movie where he's friends with the dog? Flipper? Flipper. Yeah. Never once did I hear that sound in Flipper. Was Flipper a TV show or a movie? It was a great TV show. Yeah. This is great, Pod. Yeah, well, it's not coming through. All right, edit, no, edit that out. So yeah, uh, what's the next? <laughs> anyway, All right. that was that was a uh, bottlenose dolphin. Zero points awarded. Yeah, number four. I'm not enjoying this. I'm really All right, all right quiet. It's great. Uh, the, in, the listeners are enjoying it. Here we go. Charlie's number? not. Look at Charlie. Look at his tongue. <laughs> number four. I know this one, so you guys should go. This is do crazy. You? Yeah, I do. This sounds like a human instrument. It's, it's of, getting the dog furious. Yeah, look at Charlie. He's ready to attack. It's so it's one of my favorite sounds I've ever heard in my life. So, um, and the experience from hearing. It Can you give us just a little hint? Howler maybe? monkey. Uh, good guess. You a little a hint? hint. Little hint for the. Sure, it occurs monkey. in Madagascar. <laughs> Come on. Uh, That's a great hint. I know, but it's like uh, one group of animals in the entire country. Yeah. Just, just give it to a it's guy a red, who's never it's, been to Madagascar. Is it a red rough lemur? No, but that's a good guess. It's the two animals greater than that in size. I'm going to go with a uh, African gorilla then. So close. They live in the Madagascar, Malagasy right? Malagasy gorilla? <laughs> the Malagasy what gorilla. What is it? What it's is an it? injury. Ah, the lemur. injury. Yeah. It is an injury. So real quick before Kyle goes into the next one, 
So the experience for me, the very first time I ever went to Madagascar, we've never been to where Indri occur. Got it. They're in okay. um, Ranamafana National Park, which is this national park. It's like three hours from Tana. And the very first time I went to Madagascar, I was pretty young. I was like 22 years old. And uh, I went with Jess and we drove into this national park. We got there late at night. And we yeah, had no money. We were staying in this like, they didn't have hostels, but they're just basically like wooden rooms with like a wooden frame for a bed and no real mattress. And you just go to sleep. And then at dawn, you wake up and you hear the sound. And it's like this, like, imagine that cranked like 100x in volume because they're all around. Okay. And you you get goosebumps. Your skin stands up and you open like the blinds and the shutters. And there's just these misty mountains and this crazy like sound like coming from like 10 different directions. And then you hike for like two, three hours and see this lemur that's human sized. It's amazing. That yeah. sounds pretty incredible. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. Really even, cool. Even me who never wants to leave the house kind of wants to do I that. Remember, yeah, remember the night that we went out in um in Vietnam and there was like the nitrous and the climbing across the ceiling. We've told the story. I was wondering if you're gonna talk yeah. about Episode balloons. one. Yeah. And we played badminton in the street. Yeah. And then those guys screwed us. Yeah. <laughs> so we got back from that and we were staying, you know, it was just like jungle and then this little like resort yeah. that we were, you know, whatever we were staying at before we went in. And uh the sound guy was up and hammered. hammered. He'd been drinking by himself yeah. and he was just like <laughs> holding his boom up, pointing it at the forest and his headphones on. And he's just like wobbling. He's like, you got to come listen to this. He's like, you got to come put these headphones on. Yeah. And he couldn't hear it with your naked ear, but he had it like turned all the way up and he was getting it on his boom and you could just hear all these monkeys. Yeah. Dude, it was see super that? cool. And he was just listening to monkey sounds. <laughs> that's literally like more, that's more of a draw to me. I'm like one of those guys who puts noise canceling headphones on and dances by himself in the middle of the night when he's drunk. Oh, sure. This well, is this is what I would be doing <laughs> if I was out on a expedition with you guys. Yeah. Si silent disco. Yeah, you'd be <laughs> using technology. Have, have you before Kyle goes in the next one? Have you guys seen a silent disco? Yes, in person I've seen them. So what? there's one. So you that were involved? On, no. On oh. Thursdays for two months in the summer, there's one that happens on the far end of our rugby field. <laughs> I might Amazing. have told this before. So you so, guys are smashing heads and then people are dancing with headphones Literally on. like 50 guys show up ready to just smash each other, like furiously angry. <laughs> and then there's just this like clownish looking guy in a tie dye t-shirt with <laughs> dreadlocks, like just yeah. spinning a thing and all these people in headphones like and making out and like rolling around on the grass on the other side. Why did the silent disco get invented? What couldn't was the you. thought? Well, like, I, I oh, mean, it's too weird if we all hear the same song out loud. I couldn't tell. I gotta. I mean, I, I gotta. I think do you Kyle know? knows. Kyle has I, input. My guess is that it had to do with like noise complaints and going late into the night. Sure. I, was, I was gonna say there's some. And why very, do they do it at four in the afternoon when <laughs> yeah, we're training? Some, <laughs> there's some very clear benefits to it. Cost. You, you don't have to have a big sound system at all. You're no, just, but you still got to have it synced up so that everyone's headphones getting the same song at the same time. No, they they have channels. They can pick different. Yeah, I don't think that. Oh, that much. okay, dude. Also, just look. I'm not being against silent disco. Just do it in your fucking living room. Nah, like, because if you're it's about doing being it in with the other public, people. It's a nightmare. Nah, nah. You've dude. never looked dumber than being in a silent Bro, disco, like rolling out of your fucking brain. I, I'm a guy that afternoon. would do a fucking silent disco, all right? I, because when you put those headphones on and nah, you've had bro. maybe a little ecstasy or some acid, smoked a little reefer, maybe had a few drinks. It's like four o'clock in the but, afternoon and it's Santa Barbara. Shit. What you, what you, you have to have a cocktail that? of four nar illicit narcotics in you for it to sound fun. Correct. No, no, no. That's not true. I'm just saying if I were to do a silent disco, I would have right. a cocktail. These people just start rolling around making out on the grass, by the way. Like, I've seen this yeah. multiple times. And we're, like, running around trying to hit each other. It's, like, 85 degrees out. And there's just people, like, rolling around with headphones I mean, on the I mean, grass. If we're, if we're being out. honest, the guy in the tie-dye who's making out with a girl rolling around sounds a little cooler than the guys who are like, I'm going to smash your face in, no bro. Way, bro. No right, way. So let's do the last they, sound. They, also, they by the way, you hold so your drink much, in your dude. right hand, finish your beer. Correct. Never drink with your right hand. Let's see this sound. Let's last hear this sound. last sound. Forrest got one. That's unfortunate. People are so mad that we've put a stop in the middle of the animal sound. I don't care. All right. It's my Num podcast. Number five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's hear it. Oh, there's a problem. Hold on one second. Kyle's got a new mixing board. I wish yeah. you would have figured this out while we were yammering about not animals. And we had 40 minutes he could have <laughs> decided how to do this. It's okay. We'll keep it. I know this one. Okay. Poor Easy. You know it? Can ahead. you play it again? Because I know it, but it's not coming to me. I've heard it before. Ah, 
Go ahead. Go I ahead. mean, this is very easy. It's in a very popular movie. Uh, it's a Velociraptor, Jurassic Park. I think it's a. I think it's a Bengal tiger. Nah, nah. It's um. Fuck. You going? I'm gonna get it wrong, but it's it's. Nah, it's not a hippo. Uh, it's like something like that. Something like a hippo. I'm a hearing rhino? it. It's like a pig or a hippo or. It sounds something like piggish, that. but I, I think it's it was coming pig, from the though. throat and not the nose. Piggish. All right, I'm gonna go with hippo, even though it's not a hippo. It is an elephant seal. Elephant oh, seal. Oh wow! Uh, I knew did it was we, something fat. Did we not do an <laughs> elephant seal skull in the skull game as well? Yeah, I think we, we did. did. We yeah. did. Yeah. So all right, a I, ribbon I, seal for sure. It's yes, November right. November thirteenth. Yeah. Thanksgiving's coming up. We're officially in the holiday season. Yeah. But I want to play. I want to play a little game. Wow. Okay. Wow. What do you think of the Kudo popcorn? Dude, it's so good. It makes my Dude. favorite snack a healthy protein alternative. That is correct. Uh, if you're on the hunt for a new healthy, guilt-free snack, meet Kudo, the official protein popcorn of the UFC. 10 grams of whey protein isolate in every bag still tastes delicious. Um, I like this white cheddar quite a bit. I yeah, got white cheddar is really good. I got the garlic parmesan. Delish. Nice. It's nice. Delush. You'll be amazed how Kudo Popcorn has somehow made your favorite healthy snack even tastier and healthier. For a limited time, our listeners can get an exclusive 25% off discount when they use the code WILD at kudosnacks.com. That's 25% off with the code WILD at kudosnacks.com. Save some money. Support the official protein popcorn of the UFC and get popped. Get popped. Hey, guys, if you're enjoying... Whoops. Guys, if you like The Wild Times, check us out on Patreon. We put out four extra podcasts per month. That's one commute a week that you're just going to be laughing and learning the whole time in the car. <laughs> hey, let me do, do something else. This is the late night content, the stuff that we, we can't show on, on YouTube because they'll kick us off YouTube. It's the Cinemax of podcasts. <laughs> Uncensored, raw dog. It's the Cinemax of podcasts check it out link right here yeah well Big i mean deal. I, all right so do you a remember game without a computer do you remember the show perfect you? strangers of course yeah with belky yep yep it belky was cousin Bartukamis. larry and belky bartakamos don't remember cousin Bartukamis. larry but i remember i remember the show okay so cousin larry had gotten into football betting okay I gotta fix my shirt because it's i'm exposing my midriff like the teenagers terrible. at starbucks <laughs> it's yeah. midriff couch uh <laughs> so belky kept winning his bets okay and he was like winning like every time he was winning like parlay bets on the NFL. Yep. And he wouldn't tell Larry his strategy. And then he revealed his strategy. Which was? He'd just take the names of the team and decide which one would win in a fight. Smart. I like so, that. Have you tried this? No, we're going to do it right now. Oh, okay. We're going to go through the games that are coming up this week. Okay. You're a biologist. Yep. You're an everyman. This is real smart. I love this game. Let's yeah, see. it's a pretty good game. Do we right. have a name for this? It's probably not going to be. Can you play some regular. kind of a jingle? Maybe just. Uh... It's called the "Don't bet on the, Don't bet on this." But let's see. <laughs> let's see if it <laughs> I'm works. Just kidding, Kyle. All right. First up, <laughs> yeah, we've got the Bengals, mm -hmm. Bengal Tiger. Yep. Versus a Raven who wins in a fight. P Peter, so I mean, we could say it at the same time. <laughs> Herpes. One, two, three. Bengal. Yeah, Bengals. All right, so you're saying Ben on the Bengals. Tiger ben on the Bengals. Right. Bird. How about Bears versus Lions? It's a good one. It is a good one. And so now I'm, we're I'm talking Grizzly, right? I'm talking a, a big Alaskan Kodiak brown yeah, bear. Okay. He hates the Bears, though, so. Versus <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Well, African actually, African lion. It's true. It's definitely going to be the whatever the other one was. The, the, the tiger. <laughs> I'm going Bears for sure. Bears. Based on this strategy, it's got to be Bears. I, I just, you know, I can't select the Bears. bears. I, I knew you couldn't. So, so you're picking a lion to I'm, win in a fight? I'm picking the lion. Yeah, I got to. All right. But Pat, are you going to tie the break? Break the tie? I'm going Bears. I, this can't be about football. It just has right. to be yeah, yeah, it's which animal, animal it's bears. obviously a bear. It's going to win obviously in a fight. Bears, 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 bears. All right. The Bears. How about this? A cowboy? <laughs> Quite weak and meager. Yeah, he might have a little six shooter on his hip. True. Versus a panther. Ooh, wow. that's better. With with the six with the six shooter. I with mean, this shooter. thing, this panther's, you know, is an opportunistic hunter. It's going to pounce. I don't know if he's going to get a shot off in time. But I assume the cowboy is on a horse. Ah, has to be with has a six shooter. With a six shooter, I'm going to go cowboys. Listen, I got to go cowboys here, man. Kyle, you just showed me how egregiously terrible I look with my arms out. Do you see that? 
You look. It's, it's, you remember? No way I could do any more of the pod looking like that. I uh, can't it. believe I ever put my arms up. It's, on the it's like that picture from my wedding where you look like a uh, kind of like Rosie O'Donnell. Dude, I've never looked worse. Than that it's the worst photo. picture ever. Kyle, I'm gonna send it to you. Please, All right, please show it don't. up in the pod. How about this one? A Seahawk. Yep. Or a ram. Oh. In a fight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's you know you get, coming from the air. You got Se- the rams. Seahawks. Yeah. Wow. Stellar, got, stellar sea eagle over any ram, period. I mean, I okay. feel like the ram is only going to be on the defense the entire... There's it's nothing not going to be just, able to mount an offensive. Yeah, there'll be no offense going from the ram, yeah. but I still got to just pick the ram because nah. ram, okay. Seahawks. Now, here's a bit of an odd one. This is going to be the last one here. I like right. it. A giant? <laughs> yep. Or, or a commander? Wow. This is a hard one. So um, basically, it's Joe well, Biden versus the Giants. No, no, yeah. listen, this actually happened, did it not? Explain. Where, the, where the, there was a giant that a commander had uh, commanded some troops to go get it out of a cave. Oh, the Kandahar Giant? Yeah, the Kandahar Giant. This has happened. Yeah. I think we talked about that on the pod. I'm saying yeah. one commander. I know. Literally, I, know, I want saying. you to picture a yeah, giant yeah. Yeah. versus Joe Biden in his suit. Come on now. <laughs> He's a commander in chief. Giant. Joe Biden. No, it's obviously Joe Biden. Guess, guess we got to go with the Giants. Yeah. But if if the commander was commanding, let's say, three Cowboys. So let me ask you this quickly. Damn it, you, are you just going to bypass that? That's a ask, great question. Let me ask you this. Of all of those picks that we just did, how close or far from like Vegas odds were we? How the hell oh, do I, you know? I don't know. Let me see. I but mean, you know. He well, knows. Listen, he pays attention to all this in stuff. The, next the Ravens will be favored against the Bengals. Okay. So we went against that. Yep. The Lions will definitely be favored over the Bears. Okay. Went the against Bears that. Are, are god awful. Giants commander is probably pretty even. Okay. Cowboy Panther. Cowboys will be heavily favored. Yeah. Um, and then what was it? Seahawks, Rams. Seahawks yeah. will be favored. Seahawks. Okay. So we So one for six. I would say probably don't use Belky's strategy. No, no, yeah. use my <laughs> strategy because I'm the one that went against the grain there. So use my first picks there. Uh, okay, Canada Hair Giant, dude, pretty sweet. I'm just saying, if you had three cowboys and a commander, yeah, I, I went down the wormhole on the Kandahar Giant. It's pretty, bullshitty. it's legit. It's not. There's a lot. At all. No, it's like it's really hard to decide because there's yeah. lots of people that are like, this is BS. This, you yeah. know, the guy who first told the story. The guy who first told the story is a YouTuber. Yeah, what's his name? I watch. You watched the video, right? But yeah, yeah. So I wrote a whole show on it and tried to pitch it and everything. Oh, really? Yeah. Didn't go? Retracing the steps, like going into the cave in Kandahar and everything. Didn't go. I, th- I would watch that. It's interesting. I would to go look for like biological it. evidence of like, was yeah. a giant human living I had there? a whole thing like you can do eDNA. So literally all you have to do is get some sand out the cave and see if there was any giant humanoids there. Yep. It was like pretty clever. Pretty yeah. simple too. Why aren't we doing this? Because it's a cover up and it's true. That's why. I mean, what? <laughs> that's would... why. That's why they didn't buy the show. The government stopped it. Exactly. What's <laughs> the largest primate species that's ever lived? Do you know? Uh, that's ever lived? Yeah. No, I don't know. Like, what has kept? Pri- there really aren't any Cal- giant at- primates. What keeps primates from getting huge? Right? Like, there was giant bears. There's giant sloths. It's the, it's, I've read uh, that it's the amount of oxygen. There's not enough oxygen to no, sustain. No, no, that's, you're thinking of insects. Well, um, it's the same thing, no? No, no. No, because insects, it's their biggest, circulatory biggest, system. Biggest primate, Kyle. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I knew that one. Check what? Um, Joe Rogan I, talks about how that old a lot. Was that? Constantly, yeah. Wait, wait, was that from like a million years ago? No, it's not. It's like Pleistocene, I think. Yeah, three wow. years ago. Not a that long. I mean, primate. long time, but yeah. But still, I, I didn't even know that that was a real thing. That, yeah. That's crazy. You pull a picture up. Please, I, I would really like there to be like a 20 foot ape. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that'd be really it, cool. Yeah. And all the biggest stuff are herbivores always, right? Carnivores are never the biggest. Like it just never happened. Right. That's true. Um, Which is, yeah, that's strange. Look at Gigantopithecus. Crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, a, so imagine if there stud. was just a couple of these wandering around North America. <laughs> <laughs> like out in the wild. Yeah. Can That'd you do Gigantopithecus next to Gorilla? <laughs> I don't want to see what that What would you like. do if you encountered one of these in the wild, Pat, or in forest? Oh, oh, I would know that I wasn't, it, it wouldn't want to eat me, yeah, pull so up I would that try pick. not to threaten it. Look at that. Like, gorillas are utterly terrifying just yes. based on everything, and look at the size of Gigantopithecus. Crazy. Wow. Crazy. Gigantopithecus doesn't look particularly intimidating, though. It no. looks like a woolly mammoth combined with a gorilla do face. Do we know that it had a dopey face like that? Yeah, it's, a, it's an orangutan relative. 
Really? Yeah. So you're saying orangutans have dopey faces? Yeah, pull up an orangutan picture. They look, Bro, yeah, that's there you go, right there. That's orangutans are some of my favorite things to look at at the zoo. Yeah, they're are, amazing. So, cool. so it goes in in order of intelligence between the primates. Uh, is it chimpanzee then orangutan? Oh, I'm not sure. I think I so. Think I'm pretty sure chimpanzees at the top. Well, chimps yeah. are the top, and yeah, then I think I orangutan. I, that sounds right. I mean, I don't. Orangutans always remind me of like a. Uh, they just have like a Buddha belly. They remind me of like a relaxed meditative Buddha. They do. They're they tend to sit that and way. And they have a nice I like their foreheads. They just yeah. have like a very thoughtful brow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why <laughs> I think I like brow. looking at them. Um well, we've got a contest going on. We do. This it's is underway. A- yeah. Entries oh, are yeah. closing soon. Explain. Well, Leatherman, I- our friends at Leatherman, yes, uh, have given us a new multi-tool that Forrest is obsessed with, the so Leatherman good. Arc. <laughs> the Arc. And one-handed have, tool. That's what people are, need to understand. You can yeah. do everything on a Leatherman with one hand. 21 tools in there? Yep. Incredibly sharp? Yep. All made with uh, super high-end steel. Everything's ma- uh, cabled. It's the magnetic opening that gets it for me. It's like, look at that. It's like a switchblade. A yeah. uh, butterfly knife. Butterfly knife. Yeah, yeah, switchblade. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very cool. So nice. Already have over 200 entries in the really? contest. Yes. Oh, wow. Dude, people are, uh, there's some incredible stories. Yeah, because you want to win this so badly. It's yeah. the coolest tool. I'm not going to do the whole thing because you guys know I spazzed out. It's the coolest tool they've ever made, hands yeah. down. Yeah. So if you want to win a Leatherman Arc, all you do is go into the comments of YouTube, Spotify, wherever you listen. Give us your favorite. Tell us a story. Yep. Five sentences of your favorite outdoor moment. Yep. And we will, on the next pod, we're going to read the three finalists. Right. And then uh, we will be giving one away before Christmas to whoever's outdoor moment story really hits us, really gets us. There could be an adventure, could be heartwarming. There's zero chance you regift this item. Yeah. Like you're going to get this and be like, wow, I was going to give it to my dad. Fuck you, dad. This is mine now. Yeah. And we're going to read your story on the air. Yeah. And we're, I, by the way, we're closing entries on November 20th. So you've got one more week one to week. submit your. Uh, one submit week your, left. And I have to do a, I have to tell a story, right? I'm on. Yeah. So final we've moment. done, we've been counting down your number three, your number two. This is your number one. You're making your story Leatherman centric. Mine are Leatherman centric. Because you always carry them. The entries Yours don't doesn't have, have to be. be. Correct. But mine What's are. What's your number one for us? All right. Mine, you're, you're going to hate me for even sharing this, but. I already hate you. Oh it's fine. Um, remember when we were in Songdung? Of course you do. Yeah. One of the best trips we've ever been on. Of course. And <laughs> we were ascending at the very end. You know where I'm going with this. Yes, I do. Now and, I do. Uh, so at the end of this we've hike. We've never here, told this story, by the way. I don't think we have. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't. It felt like a big moment for a moment, and then nothing happened. Yeah. But. At the end, so we did a six mile like hike for what three or four days, whatever it was, yeah. through this cave, Song doing the largest cave in the world. Right. And at the very end, you have to ascend up like four hundred foot vertical wall, and you're like rappelling and climbing, and you've got all the harnesses and the ropes on. Yeah. Well, typically you do that with nothing on, right, so that your harness doesn't get caught and shit. Mm-hmm. But we had all our gear with you us. You mean naked? No, you idiot. Just all not right. with backpacks. You don't stuff. usually have a big backpack. Gotcha. Yeah. We had all our shit with us. And we had so much stuff. We had like 50 porters on this trip, but we had so much stuff. We still had to carry a bunch of our own gear going up at the end. Yeah. And I was, Pat was right ahead of me and I was right behind him. We were sort of like ascending like this and his line got tangled in his backpack and he got fully, fully stuck. Oh man. At like, what would you say? 140 yeah. feet in the air? <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I was thinking 200, but it might have. Whatever. Either way, uh, it's a not a fun place to be it's stuck. Like, and it's, it's dark like, as shit, right? Yeah. So your headlamp's the only thing that's lighting you inside this yeah. fucking It's like cave. your parachute getting tangled after you get out of the and, plane. And, and because of how the whole thing works, like, there was nobody with us. Do you know what I mean? So, like, the guys who were sort of, like, our guiding force were way up ahead or below us because, you know, there's. it's not like you're, like, Oh, hey, I'm stuck. And somebody's like, oh, I'll be right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was just basically Pat and I, I think Mitch was below me, if I remember correctly. But Pat's ropes got super fucked up on his backpack. But you have a safety line. So you have your main ascending line, and then you have a secondary line, which I think contributed to getting stuck. Yes. Uh, but it's a lot of lines. A lot of lines. <laughs> I had my Leatherman, not my arc. I think it was a Leatherman wave on my hip, like yeah. I always do. And we had no one around. And Pat was like, fuck, what do I do? And for a moment, it felt like I hope I don't kill Pat. You were above him, right? <laughs> no, no, I he was, was just below, below me, him, ah. just to the left. Um, so I could see the tangle. So I took my Leatherman out, took the knife out, and I was like, I think I'm cutting the right line. I think I said it with a lot more confidence. Yes, you that. did. I believed that you knew what you were doing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Yeah. 
and I cut the line, <laughs> yeah. thinking that like I'm gonna free him from the uh, from the tangle sure. of his main line. And fortunately, it, well, I cut the right line, and so that yeah. all cleared. And then he went up the safety line. Yes. So wow. so there was like another like 25 feet to go, or maybe it was only like 20 feet to get up to the next stop where you were gonna switch lines and hook in for the right. next section. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was still very scary as Forrest was cutting one of my ropes. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. but. I was pretty much stuck. And it's funny because like most of the, the people that were setting the lines didn't speak English, but like the guy who, the Australian guy yeah. who explained to us how the climb was going to work. I remember him saying something to the extent of like, when you're in between, like when you're on each rock face, like if something like no one's coming to help you. Right. Basically. Exactly. There's no <laughs> like, middle oh, ground. Yeah. That's not a good thing to hear. Yeah. Well, and you know, for me visualizing this funny part is, is I know you, Pat, and I know how scared you get in like unexpected situations. We were all situations. scared, by the way. Like we were sweating. Really? It was gnarly. I mean, scared might not be the right word, right, but it was no, no, nerve wracking no. yeah. Yeah. doing this. Yeah. No, no, no one like. Well, because he's, you're below him too. So like if he can't, you're fucked too. Yeah, I mean, to look, extent, when I yeah. cut the line, I had my a death grip on his fucking harness. Not that I think I could have held on, but I was <laughs> right. just like, I fucking hope this works. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thank God I had my Leatherman. I mean, but, you know. That's... Yeah, then we got, we finally got up to the top and they had a little treat for us. Booze? Yeah, just ice cold bottles of beer. Oh, nice. And we got to the top, had an ice cold beer and a sandwich. Dude, and then so and then nice. still had like another like four or five mile hike <laughs> yeah, through the so through the jungle to, to get out. But, but honestly, uh, man, fucking awesome! It really is the little things like that. Like, how much easier did it make the 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 trek out? Just that you had that sandwich and that beer there. For oh you. Yeah. yeah, like if you did morale booster. Oh, dude, huge Big those little booster. things, man. Yeah, yep. no, that that's that's a great story. Uh, yeah. It's funny because like you think, did Forrest really cut? a line not exactly knowing what was going to happen. <laughs> and that is but something you would do. It is. I mean, this is the same, it really this is. Is I mean, the I same trip. 90% sure. Yeah. Maybe no, I mean, I wouldn't have let you do it if I didn't. Yeah. Could, I could see that there were two the lines. The safety line was right there. Yeah. yeah. Forrest isn't the most, like he, you, you kind of just do things quickly and impulsively. Dude, it drives yes, my does. wife nuts. It drives everybody nuts. Thanks. Well, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I like it. This is the same trip where Forrest almost willingly drowned to death. <laughs> Swimming across the lake with his pack on his hat. This is true. Yeah. Wait, wait. Tell this story again. I, dude, I, I feel like we talked about this in episode one, but I, yeah. I forget. It's we were, very humiliating for we, me. <laughs> when you first descend down into the first cave that you have to get through to get to Sandung, there's a lake at the bottom. Mm. So you basically just rappel down, and then the for the porters, for the gear, and for the crew, there were these like little rafts available. Okay. And Forrest was so mad because they made him wear a helmet. And he was just fuming <laughs> mad. Fuming. I was so angry. Tried to, he kept taking it it's off. Like this bright yellow <laughs> fucking like dork helmet. And yeah. I was like, this is not it. He was not so me. mad because we were filming him as he was rappelling down, of course. Ah, and I we got, got the you. drone and he's just steaming because of the helmet. And so then <laughs> so we like true. get our shit on the rafts and Forrest's like, there's no chance I'm stepping on that raft. I was like, this is an adventure. I'm not going on a raft. I'm yeah. swimming across this ice cold lake. Yeah. That's that's the draw to you, I think, though, in general, is that you're like, you really are that way. You're like, I don't want to wear this helmet. They're like, you gotta wear it. And then <laughs> didn't wear like, it once. <laughs> yeah. And so then so we get across, we get the cameras set to film him swimming across the lake. And so, so he floats his pack. It's super fucking cold, the lake. I just want to point out, I played water polo for like five years, right? Nobody like, cares. No, this is, shut up and oh, listen. sorry. Okay, I, play, <laughs> I played like all through high school, first year in college on like an intramurals team. I was like, I'm a great swimmer. I could tread water. Yeah. The pack wasn't even that heavy. It was probably like 25 pounds. Yeah. It wasn't well, even like heavy. Nice heated pool is the difference. Anyway, so yeah. I was like so confident. So he's got the, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's swimming with the pack over his head, trying yeah. not to get his pack wet. Had it's a laptop a, in it's there. It's a big ass fucking lake <laughs> because this, this cave, the ceiling's like 300 feet. So the scale's all weird. I think the lake's a lot long, bigger than he thought. Ah. So it's like nine Olympic swimming pools. <laughs> and we start <laughs> seeing him. Yeah, we start seeing him struggle. Oh, man. And we're watching him struggle, and Mitch is on a long lens, and I'm standing and I'm looking at the little screen. And I'm like, <laughs> I like started, and the water was like here. I was yeah. like, nipples, like fucking biceps. Of course. Going. I was like, yeah, let's go. It's and like so when now, you start yeah. a jog out, you're just like sprinting. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so now his mouth's dipping in, and he's <laughs> spitting the water oh out. Oh, my God. And we're just like, he's, he's really struggling. 
And I'm, I say to Mitch, I go, I think he's drowning. I think he's going to drown. And Mitch is like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, I think he is. And I was like, did we do anything? He's like, nah, I think we just let him go. Man. He's going to be so mad. And then. Uh, I was already so pissed off. So we're like waiting. Shot. We're waiting. He gets out. Just basically walks out of the shot. And just doesn't talk to anyone. He's just so fucking pissed. And so then eventually I just walk over to him. And we cut, you know, and we're yeah. going to whatever and get their tent set up and stuff. <laughs> sure. And he's so mad. And I just walk over. He's taking his wet shit off, just like sitting in this cave naked. And I'm like, True. You're going to need some time, huh? He's like, Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm out of it. I'm so pissed. <laughs> so, so, you know what's so funny, though? Yeah. yeah. Is, sorry, I don't interrupt you. No, I want to go. I want to hear you and I go, I, I could tell you were mad. I was like, I, You're really mad, right? You're like, Yeah. I go, You almost just drowned, right? You're like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I admitted it. Yeah. Yeah. So, dude, here's what's funny, though. That's like 28-year-old season one Forrest or season two, two Forrest. 35-year-old Forrest would be like, yeah, helmet, the raft. Like, <laughs> yeah. anybody got coffee? Like, let's what, go. So I, yeah. I, what made you so angry in, the the, in that moment? No, no, no. I mean, when you got over, like when you got well, to the other side. It was just an accumulation. It was like in my head, I'd painted up this picture of this like crazy adventure of like repel and it was a crazy adventure by the way but this was the start of it yeah. right and and i was just like you know it's like we're more people have been to the the top of everest than have been to the bottom of this cave and i was like this is it like we're fucking just getting out there we're doing this thing nobody's done it's so exciting St. patrick had introduced me to i never even heard of it and then i started researching it and my fucking mind was blown I was <laughs> so excited about this whole thing yeah and um uh, yeah and then we get there and there's these like two fat middle-aged Australian dudes and they're like, yeah, you gotta wear a helmet, mate. Make sure you go behind me. Watch your step there, sonny. And I'm like, dude, fuck off. Like, yeah. do you know how many countries I've been to? Do you know how many like, cool adventures I've been on? He's like, don't walk off the trial, mate. And I'm like, dude, I'm gonna fucking kill this guy. And, uh, and then, we get to the fucking cave and he's like helmets on chaps and i'm like dude fuck you like i have my cool adventure hat i'm going on an adventure i'm not yeah. fucking putting this yellow helmet on and the guy's like yeah you're not going down there till your helmet goes on and i'm like dude, i'm gonna fucking kill this guy yeah. this guy's like he's like fucking clinically obese he's like 63 years old and he's telling me how to be safe i'm like fuck you bro yeah but we we because we we wanted to explore other parts of the cave that weren't part of what they typically we were we had a destination which was yeah. the rainforest right. in the second cave well, and the tourists it's like this is a thing you have to buy to do like a specific tour 200 right 200 people a year get yeah. to go down in this cave yeah and, and i do want to say that like it all opened up and we got down there and they fucking chilled out about where we could step and the, the helmets oh, and yeah. everything but it was like in my head i was like here we go greatest adventure of my life and then yeah. there's a guy telling me where to you, fucking you walk. thought it was going to be <laughs> like four full days of this level of technical yeah. yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah and, yeah. and it, it really wasn't no and we realized we could we the guy who was the stickler first of all once you kind of got down in the cave it was just you're just going right right you're just right. walking and they were you know they didn't have that much control of you but uh the guy who was kind of the stickler for the helmet <laughs> we started giving him jolly ranchers yeah <laughs> and we we're like and he like he was like, oh, if I'm a dick about the helmets, they're going to cut off this jolly. Dude, I'm not <laughs> kidding. We got him fully hooked. Yeah. I have a video. I'm going to send this to you, Kyle. Don't let me forget this. We'll cut it in. Where he's like, he's got like nine Jolly Ranchers in his mouth. And he's like, <laughs> you got to love these Jolly Ranchers, mate. Yeah. And you're like, dude, nobody but you likes these candies. <laughs> yeah, I know. He was obsessed with the fucking those hard ass so Jolly Ranchers. Funny, dude. Did we finish talking about what you need to do for Leatherman? I oh don't no! Remember. So there's two ways. <laughs> yeah. If okay. you want a Leatherman arc, <laughs> you do. You can shop now. Link is in the description. Or submit a story, five sentences, your favorite outdoor moment, just of your life. Yeah. Paint a picture, tell a story, and uh, you'll get it read on the pod if you're one of the three finalists. And then we'll ship somebody one in time. Boom. Bada. To show it off for the holidays, dude. You know what? You know what is what I like about you too. So I've I've listened to every story that you guys have from all the adventures multiple times on and off air, and literally, I the insight I just got into that story makes it so much better. <laughs> well, and, and those are the things you could never show on TV. Do you know what I mean? Like, right? You 
on a YouTube or something, you could, or sitting here talking about it, you can. But yeah. like when you're making a show for Animal Planet, you can't be like Forrest and the the plump Australian tour guide <laughs> are arguing <laughs> are arguing yeah. for forty five minutes. Like that <laughs> right. doesn't exist. Yeah, you in don't TV get into world. the bribing. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, like so. Oh God! And what? that was that. So that was the first night of camping. We camped right on the other side of that lake. Yeah. But it was like I don't know, maybe a ten or fifteen mile jungle hike just Oof. to get to the cave yeah brutal oh, hot dude, brutal shit. long boiling hot boiling hot and just covered just to where everyone just gave up removing the leeches oh yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. so it's just like it, it was the end of a very very long arduous day with gear everyone's just covered in fucking leeches all over your nuts and fucking dick. everything and so, dude yeah. you don't you don't really i mean when you're watching on tv you don't really take into consideration how taxing it is for the entire operation oh, the whole to thing move is crazy. like through yeah. this kind of production. You and know? I, I also want to be clear. I was being a brat. Like, yeah, it, I mean, you I are. should have just listened to the guy and been like, yeah, man, no problem. I'll wear the helmet. <laughs> I know it looked fucking stupid having a bright yellow helmet on TV with like a camo outfit. But, you know, I should have just been like, yeah, dude, I'll wear the helmet, you know, and him and I, I don't remember his name. Do you remember those guys? Names? Uh, no, because I was thinking it was Jeffo, but Jeffo was in the Galapagos. Let's yeah. just call him Jolly. Doesn't matter. Jolly and I, like, <laughs> he was great, dude. He we was were awesome. Totally good by, like, the next morning, and they, they they were like, do whatever you like. Yeah. It was just, like, the situation, being exhausted. I think we did back-to-back -back shoots there, too, didn't we? Yes, we did. So we came off of one shoot and went right into that. Yeah, we were yeah. there for a month at that point. Yeah. Oh, my so, God. Yeah. And, and you guys we had, were already there for a month? We had month? gotten yeah. hammered and done nitrous, like, two nights before. <laughs> oh, <Yeah. laughs> my God. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. dude, there's always that that weird thing too when you are meeting a a group of people that you have to like work with or right. like accomplish something right. with where you're kind of like sniffing each other out. How's this going to go? Yeah. yeah, you have to and, set expectations, right? And right. one of those for me was always and still is like, okay, you're not telling me what to do. You right. know what I mean? Like I'm here to do a job, which is find this animal, do this film production. I'm not going to be told, like, stand here, step here. Like, I'm not on your schedule. Right, right, right. And Pat's maybe a little more diplomatic about handling that. I usually come in like a bull in a china shop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the dynamic between a producer and the talent. I right, mean, right, It's right. like, you know, and but I mean, that's that's also what gives great moments. And to even expand on that, the fact that that is how it was and, you know, the anger and everything that was there it's a moment on this podcast. It's like, dude, like it's, it's not on the show, but like, it's like, it's a life thing that, that happens when you're out there filming all this stuff. I always give you guys tons of shit for not being prompt and like available to record the podcast. You do. <laughs> but, but uh you know this story made me realize, Oh yeah. Like they got to be out there, like getting the story. So yeah, it's true. This is true. God, this is true. Anyway, Thanksgiving's coming up. Yeah, what? So, just real quick, mm. what's the plan? What what meal? I don't care about I'm gonna who's going to be there. I'm going to continue eating as I, I have for I the think, past two months. I think we do this every year, but I adore turkey. Love it. He likes the tradish. I like a traditional. I know you don't. It's and, okay. And no, he likes can, Italian. I know. I know. Um, he'd so, what's have the a plan? Pizza. What, what no, I, I don't know. I, I think we're going to stay home. I'm trying to. Jessica, I want to stay home. Don't get mad. I want to stay home. Jessica, not me, suggested going to Mexico. So well, we might... you can record from Mexico, so I'll That's prove. true, and I did. I take the Starlink, yeah. and it worked. And <laughs> yes. usually I'm very drunk when doing it. <laughs> true. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, Jessica was like, why don't we take the kids and go down to Baja for, you know, over Thanksgiving, get away from our families. <laughs> and uh, so we're dabbling with that idea. But regardless, the meal is a nice oven-roasted turkey. Okay. Beautiful. Some mashed potatoes, not the sweet potato with the fucking marshmallow. marshmallows. Ew, yes. marshmallows. No, buttery, 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 salty, sweet. That's what I want. Mashed potatoes. My potatoes should not be sweet. No sweet. Okay. No. I don't want any sweet. Some in green my beans, meal. gravy, so much gravy. Yeah. And then a nice pecan pie. Well, you got to have gravy if you're going to have a shit ass dry turkey. Like They're you not will. dry, dude. Turkey's always dry. I mean, it's. Unless it's, you eat the leg. It's a it's meat. Good. That requires a slathering of butter-based gravy. We inject Let the me, butter into the trash. You guys are always giving cooking tips on this show lately. I'm going to give you lately, a tip. One episode in. Slather, <laughs> slather any meat you're cooking in butter, and it's better. It doesn't matter. Just keep slathering what it. What food do you not slather in butter to make it better? It's the secret Name to having a food. It's the secret to having a good restaurant. Like, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter. Yep. It's like, do you want to get people? Yeah, no, I mean, look, the pilgrims had, there were wild turkeys running around. Yep. Mm -hmm. They hadn't 
domesticated cows. Right. They didn't have that yet. Yep. They did. Um, did they do ham? Like, did they? Were there pigs running around too? They probably brought pigs with them. Oh, they probably did. But okay. the, you know, we have better options, guys. Let's let's let's. Well, I hate get ham. with the times. I'm not a ham. Up. I'm not a ham man. Have a nice. I th- I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. I don't know if it's going to be open, okay. but what I was going to do was there's a uh, Morton steakhouse, like a mile from my house. I do like Morton's a lot. And, and I, I want the closest <laughs> steakhouse so that I can still get it back and be hot. But my plan was to like order, you know, proper steak dinner, go pick that up, bring it to the home. And, and wow. that's the only reason that's understandable. Usually I give you shit for such shenanigans on Thanksgiving. It's You're going to have a two week old at home. I, uh, that's true. Right now, I have a five day old at that's home. That's what I'm saying. So, like, yeah. there's no world in which like you can get away with trying to make you know, a Thanksgiving no, stuff. No, I, I mean, your your meal choice really did kind of bum me out right there, Pat. But I will <laughs> I will say that it is accurate because you do have your new two week old daughter. A bunch of big, nice fucking Cajun nah, ribeyes with the whipped potatoes, it, it's, the it's wedge as salad. De- it's as depressing as the divorced dad going and eating with his son at the Denny's. I can, mean... Can we... So, wait. Let's what? hear your Thanksgiving, then I want to play a game. That I'm going just, traditional, man. So, me... Yeah. Me and me and my wife, dude. The first my year we met, I. we did we did the traditional, and it was a thing we did. We cooked together. We were drinking wine. This will be the first time she can like drink wine with me because she's been basically pregnant for two years. Two now, years, three years. yeah. We're, I, I'm just like stoked about it. We're gonna have some cinnamon candles roll in, or some kind of fall candle. That's nice. Oh yeah. my god, I like that idea. I'm yeah. super stoked about this holiday, and we're gonna family? have family. No family. Well, I think I think the family will be. I don't know if we'll do it at that dinner, but yeah. we're gonna have the. You know, we'll have. She'll be two months old or whatever, and my son is however old he is. The two kids. <laughs> I think tra- I've got one. I I don't know how old they are. You don't remember? I'm still Just in survival mode. Just don't fucking say months. Still survival mode. They're 29 dude. months. Like shut the fuck up. <laughs> I mean, your kids two. I don't it's not to 29 do months. By the way, Pat, I can't believe how in, you know, like your demeanor for having a five day old. It's, yeah. it really it's is. real chipper. It, it's, yeah. it's incredible. I think, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what you did. I, I pull it together for the, for the Brosners. You really yeah. 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 No, My right. circles. Yeah, go ahead. What's the one game? game. We're going to play Sorry. one game before we wrap out. It's okay. not going to be a battle royale. Not today. No, yeah. no. We don't do that anymore. Well, we just haven't done one and I haven't thought of one. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll play a game, Top 3 DFL. Oh, I think we have a jingle for that. Let's get it go. We do. We definitely do. Kyle shaking his head, head no. I what's, programmed what's the topic? it in. It's fine. You spurred this by bringing up uh, Morton's. Okay. Top what? 3 DFL steak cuts. Uh, oh, wow. Easy. It's important. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's so I'll easy go. for me. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, had one the other day. I'm going to go number three. Uh, ribeye, dude. It's so good. Top? And- that's number one? No, number three. Okay. Number three. Yep. Ribeye. It's delicious. Uh, it's fatty. I mean, dude, my wife doesn't Is he going to do a full story on each one? Yeah, I think Do- so. Probably. I mean, <laughs> okay. might okay. as well be a Doesn't butcher. eat the the fat, really, and I'm just it's like, the best give part. me oh, that the fat. fat. Interesting. If it's not rendered enough, it's, it is horrible. No, of course. But like, if it's cooked enough, it's fat, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. And uh, so number two will just be my, a T-bone, dude. Because, you know, the, 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 one. Love a the T-bone, the thing about the T-bone is, is that when you get towards the bone, it's the, the, the most delicious meat it's out there. Yeah. It's I'm so good. I love a T-bone. Oh, man. That's and, funny because I feel like most people don't consider it, but you and I are on the same wavelength. There. For sure. Yeah. For yeah. sure. And again, uh, I'm going, uh, number one is going to be the New York strip. Yeah. Delightful. You can do it bone in or boneless. TFL. Uh, Bone in costs a lot. Don't don't rush me. Oh, <laughs> don't rush me. I didn't know we were doing. A I mean, I know I already pod. talked about the bone, but uh, <laughs> don't DFL. <rush> me. <laughs> God, I don't even know any other cuts. Oh, DFL. I'm going with. Oh my mom. Uh, sorry, mom. If you listen to this, she doesn't. She used to fucking make a flank steak. What the hell even is that? I think it's the diaphragm. I don't know I don't what like it is. Flank steak. I, it's, I think it's, it's the marble, diaphragm of the I, did, I thought that that's what a steak was until yeah. I was older it's and like bought one thick. at the store. And it's like yeah. tough. It's gross. It's, it says it's the lower chest or abdominal muscle. It, it's it's the Ooh, part the of the abs. cow that's made out of rubber. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the ab muscle. Yeah. Sorry, mama. Yeah. I love Understood. you. That's flank a good steak. DFL. Yeah, yeah, it is. Flank steak. Forrest, what are yours? Um, okay. I would say three, three to one. Third is... A filet. 
Mignon. Yep. Like it, but I don't think it belongs in number one. Okay. Second, I'm also going to go T-Bone. That's where I'm going to put, put T-Bone for me T-bone. as well. T-Bone. Only because there's only one thing that beats it, which is prime rib. Oh, prime mm. rib's good. So good. Good call. Done right. Oh, so oh, good. Oh, it's so good. Melts Tee in off in mouth. Santa Barbara. You get one like this big for like oh. 12 bucks. Mwah. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Slice good. it up. Oh, Those nice dude, little neat sandwich. slices. So oh, nice. So, so so like soft, folly yeah, party. I'm so good. Hungry. Good DFL call. steak has got to be. Oh, man. He's like, I like them all. I oh, do like them all, but it's 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 probably a tri tip to be honest. It's kind of a garbage steak. It is. What? Like that's a good DFL. I like I tri tip. Like I'll oh, order well. a tri tip sandwich, but it's kind I'm of sorry. a dog shit steak. Yeah, like, I disagree. That's, I, I I don't think that's. Deck. I, I totally hear that. Yeah, it is. It's like nah, it's okay. That's all it ever is. Is you're it's, like, yeah, that was it's meat. Fine. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of salt on it. It's yep. definitely the lowest yeah. of the ones you mentioned. I'll give yeah. it. Yeah, I'm gonna go number three. Ribeye, love them. Sometimes they are too fatty. Two New hey, York. Hey, 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 slow down. Slow down. Two, two will be slow New down. York. <laughs> what about the New York? Do you like? Don't unrush him. Uh, <laughs> I, it's just yeah, it's perfect steak. I mean, it's it's a, like almost like a cross between a ribeye mm. and the number one, which mm. is the fillet for me. It's got a lot okay. going on. Love I mean, the fillet. Pretty, you know, the, the fillet everybody picks. Uh, it's pretty lame. It's right? just, you know what? I I went through a phase where I was always getting ribeye or New York, and I'm just like, I'm gonna get the one I like the most. Yeah, the most the fillet. expensive. You, right. You'll pay the extra six bucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, my DFL. This might be controversial. Skirt steak. Skirt's good. People like throwing it on feel, the grill. I feel like it's really hit or miss. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, nah, it's pretty, it's pretty trash. It's dude. a vessel for seasoning. Listen, it it's, is. It is it's dead trash. fucking last. And out of yeah. all the steaks that we've selected, that that is, it's bad. Uh, honestly, it's out of good. all the steaks that we've said, it's probably the worst. No, flank steak's the worst. You think flank's worse <laughs> than skirt? Yes. Now that I know the flank is the ab muscle. <laughs> does make you like it less. <laughs> it's fucking, yeah. that is some garbage. Yeah. Well, gents, this has been real fun it's been a pod i've enjoyed it yeah listen we do four other pods a month uh bonus pods you can get them on spotify or patreon you want to get those go to wildtimes.club forward slash info all Boom. links to everything we got some merch that just came out we're putting out some more for christmas real top tier stuff and uh go there check it out Subscribe to the pod. Subscribe to the channel. Check out the Patreon. Submit your stories. We'll submit, submit your stories, your stories. for the Leatherman. Leatherman Arc Club. Forward slash info. Forward slash info. That's so close. Um, <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good Can night. we get that music? Yeah, we got it live. Crank it. Attaboy, Crank Kyle. it. Kyle, oh, yeah. Ready. I drank three fat tires during this episode. <laughs> Forrest looks. Somebody make that into a meme and change the bottle. Good.